how to play multiplayer games on your phone. In this video I'll show you a couple of different ways to do it and the first and cheapest way is using a keyboard. A keyboard has a lot of keys. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard you can skip this next step. If you have a wired keyboard like me you need this adapter. This is a USB-C to normal USB, or if your phone uses micro USB, you'll need this one. You probably have this already, it usually comes with the phone, so search the box. If you can find the box, ask your parents, your brothers, sisters, cousins, seriously, someone will have it. If you can't find one, don't stress too much, they cost around a dollar. So anyway, you connect the keyboard to the adapter, Stick it on the phone and now it's time to map the keys to the controllers. Each emulator is different but the theory is the same. Find the input settings and map them to the keyboard as you feel comfortable. This works well for racing games and fighting games, which are like the fan favorite styles for multiplayer. You can have the bindings really simple like this, which will work with every racing game. For games like Mario Kart you can bind E to shoot the random stuff you get or you can bind every single button and sticks. But I recommend you to keep it simple because there's a problem. Most keyboards can only detect 6 keystrokes at the same time. It's fine for racing games but other games that require more complex input mechanics will not work very well if you're all trying to press the buttons at the same time. Another thing you can do is have one player on the keyboard by himself so you're not limited by the 6 keystrokes and the other player playing with touch controls on the phone. But that's a little bit messy. The screen is small and then your hands are all over the screen. A solution for this is something like this. A USB to HDMI cable. These no brand cables cost around $10 and allow you to connect your phone to a monitor or TV. Not every phone can do this though, so check that before buying a cable. Another thing to keep in mind is that these cheap cables are not very reliable. For example, this works with my S9 but doesn't work with my S20. So I decided to stop gambling and just got the official Samsung DeX. It has the HDMI output and two more USB slots. Again, there's a lot of no-name brands with similar products so check the reviews to make sure it works with your phone. Playing in a big screen is a different story, but still, playing with the touch controls doesn't feel very good. This next way is cheap or not, depending on if you own a console. If you own a PS4 or Xbox controller, you can connect them to the phone with no problems. You'll have one person on the keyboard and the other on the controller. You can have 3 players if you put 2 on the keyboard. If you own 2 controllers, you can use them. Some people say that you can't connect both, some say you can, some say you can but pressing a button in one triggers both. All of this depends on your phone and the Bluetooth version it's using. A quick fix is connecting one by Bluetooth and the other by cable using that adapter we talked about before. This will give the controllers different names. By Bluetooth is called wireless Xbox controller, by cable Microsoft controller. So they shouldn't interfere with each other. And you'll have two fully independent controllers working on your phone. If you don't own a console, you can just buy the controller. You don't need to buy the official expensive ones, there are some cheap ones made for smartphones that clamp around the phone. The problem with going the cheaper route is that a lot of users report dead zones on the analog sticks and overall problems with the buttons. So really read every review before buying one of these cheap ones. Although if the consoles you want to emulate don't use analog sticks, then this is not a big issue for you. Only more recent consoles use them. And that's it. 
if you get a USB hub like this, you can have two or more keyboards. And with just two keyboards, you can have four players playing with real physical keys on a big screen and turn your phone into the ultimate portable console. So now I'm going to explain a bit more in depth how to set the controllers. Let's start with RetroArch. RetroArch is not a emulator, it's more like a library of emulators. You have really a ton of emulators to pick from and they will all be contained here in RetroArch. So anyway, you come here to the settings this clock wheel and then down to input and it's here port 1 binds, port 2, port 3, port 4 you have to set keys for all this for each one I didn't set a lot of keys for the other controllers because the point was just to play racing games so all I did was this WS and then the D-pad same for port 3 port 3 is the same configuration but on the JKL and yep, yeah. and then what you need to do as well is when you go in game you need to pick the emulator you want but for the PlayStation run and then you need to come here on the controls Oh, it's not, it's not on the controls. You need here on the options and here multi tap enable. You need to enable multi tap or the the game will never recognize the player 3 and player 4. And on port 1, not port 2. Enable multi tap in port 1 and then turn off like close close RetroArch and open again only only then it will recognize the the other controls I wasted way too much time trying to make this work when all you had to do was turn off turn off close the program and open again and yep this is for the keyboard for the Xbox controller you don't need to do anything you just turn on connect it recognizes everything it's mapped perfectly on RetroArch next let's let's close this and we're going to Dolphin Dolphin can you see the mouse not really anyway here GameCube input click and here game gamecube emulated and you need to map this one doesn't recognize automatically you need to map everything one by one so basically you press you click a and then you click a on the controller it's turned off Wait. okay and now a you come B and B X you see you need to go like this for every option the triggers the triggers of the analog stick is just put up down left right and yep you need to go through all this and then hit save don't forget here on the corner you need to click save and exit this this is for the controller 
for the keyboard it's the same thing you just go emulator you need to click on emulator and then go one by one with the buttons and map everything to the keys on the keyboard the Wii is a bit more complicated because you have a lot of options but here's how to do it you click e remote one again emulated and then extension you need to click on extension and go classic like you don't want you don't want this one you don't want the Wii to think you are using a Wii mode because then it will have a, like the pointer on the screen and doesn't let you pick with the d-pad it's really annoying so you need to click classic and again go one by one click and map everything to either the controller or the keyboard and once you've done again don't forget press save and exit and close the program and open again and open it and now it should recognize all new inputs and that's it thank you for watching and have a great day